stop duplicating status to groups. In this video, I will show you 10 different examples how can you use groups on Monday.com more effectively. Take this inspiration and fix your Monday. One interesting approach to Monday groups is to have groups based on the departments. So this applies only to very simple cross-team or cross-departmental projects. The reason is once you collapse your groups, you cannot have different columns for different groups. Therefore, if each department is tracking very different things, it will not work or will be very messy and you will be forced to use views with filters. But again, for very simple cross-team projects boards, department names for groups works perfectly. Another reason why a lot of companies like this approach is because the gun chat itself allows you to actually filter those views, not just based on status, but also based on groups. So you can see different colors in gun chat for specific departments and teams. So this is one way to use groups when you're working in the cross-departmental projects. So there is always a department or a team in business which handles a lot of recurring tasks. So what I started doing for my clients is always creating a board for a department with recurring tasks. And when we looked at benefits of the configuration when it comes to groups, we noticed that visually the most appealing one and easiest access is to actually grouping those tasks by frequency. So that's what you have, the recurring tasks by daily, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually groups. So this is just one example. Some companies might not have semi-annual tasks or bi-weekly tasks. It depends on the department too. But this is sort of a nice way to handle recurring tasks and get easy access to them by using groups functionality. I still have to mention one of the most popular ways of using groups is, of course, based on status of the project or the item. So we have active projects and finished projects. You can also use overdue projects and other status-related groups. This is the most popular one because there's no thought put into it, into angle, or it just might be the easiest way to actually ac access all those items in your board. So this is still one way of doing groups on Monday. There are departments where project has phases and the teams have culture working on those phases. So one way to use groups on the project board is to actually use the names of your project phases. This board provides just one example of five most commonly used project phases, initiation, planning, execution, monitoring and control, and closure. Uh, other product development teams might have even seven or eight project phases, but again, take this example and make sure to use in the specific project boards where they make sense as you can use status 
for the actual completion of the milestones in those phases. So this is a nice way to really manage the project and have a nice visibility of its completion. Timesheet is one of those critical boards that you find in human resources or administration department. And that's where groups, again, are very nice to have as a function because you use custom fields for such things as location, hours, absences, pace, but you also want to see week by week uh, specific timesheets and you might want even to download them based on the groups. So that's where weekly groups really come into play and help you. Now, this board is also really good if you want to analyze what is truly happening with the shifts, where you have a dashboard with number of hours and also the gunshots for the shifts. But the groups is really a helpful part where you can utilize weekly schedules on your timesheet. Monday.com is so much more than just task management system. It can also be used for strategic planning and objectives and key results frameworks that I also added video about. But you can also implement so many more management and executive frameworks like gap analysis. So gap analysis is a method of assessing the performance of business units to determine whether the business unit or organizational structure like department is meeting those objectives, and if not, what gaps could be identified, and also their priorities and steps that should be taken to make sure that those gaps do not appear in the future. A gap analysis sometimes is referred to needs analysis, needs assessment, or need gap analysis. So what we see here on Monday, because of its flexibility to name groups and items in so many different options, we have gap analysis board, which is structured by financial needs and sales needs. So it could be another option for the needs analysis that I see a lot of companies are adding. This could be the skills needs or simply human resources needs. There could be also processes and SOPs needs that I use for identifying gaps in the processes and the workflows automation. And I always make sure that my clients are tracking those gaps that can be fixed by those specific fixes in their processes and workflow automations. So gap analysis is sort of interesting angle what you can do with monday.com. So let's talk about digital asset management or DAM. Digital assets is just a fancy term used for all those files that we are working with every day. A digital asset is any piece of your digital content plus some data that explains what it is and how to use it. Or it could be just simply a naked file. A digital asset can be a text-based file, sound file, your podcast, picture, video, interactive media, multimedia, so many options nowadays. So why are we talking about digital asset management and how does Monday come into play here? You can store and manage digital assets on a digital asset management board on Monday. You can easily access your files you need, keep everything organized, and most importantly, easily share them with your team or teams within seconds. So we have three best ways to organize your digital assets on Monday. One is Cards View as you see right here. So we would see 
the picture or video right here just a sort of a tiny image that would remind us what kind of file it is and then all the fields related to it. Another option is files gallery which is a bit messier so it's just basically all the files in a list added right here. You can have two views it could be a grid or it could be a list. So this one is sort of the least user friendly and finally the main table and that's where groups come in. For better visualization and for better access, I suggest grouping digital assets management board based on the formats, logos, videos, images, podcast recording. If you have a board which is for very specific structures, for example, podcasts, digital asset management, then your groups might be different. But if you have just one board for all your digital asset management, the format works best for groups in the table. Flexibility is one of the core features of Monday.com. So a lot of companies take this possibility of building very custom applications for any workflow and manage both customer requests and internal requests on Monday. So both of them can be handled in the platform as requests require urgency and fast access based on status, status-based groups is an excellent choice. That's what we see here on this example board where we look at the groups and we see open requests working on it and done and we know where we should we be going on to open requests to push them to working on. This is an excellent example how customer requests workflow and status-based groups work together to be as user-friendly as possible. Monday.com is one of the favorite tools for marketing departments. So no wonder the social media planner board is also one of the top boards that is being implemented continuously for companies around the globe. The way that usually groups are being used for social media planners depends, of course, on the priorities of visibility and the social media goals. But social media is most often planned based on month per month basis. Therefore, I always suggest starting with this first view for month one, month two, and just going for yearly boards in terms of social media planning. Objectives and key results framework is possible to implement on Monday and I have already made a video about this specific framework using example of two departments and six teams that you can watch and I will share that link in the description below. But today I just want to share how masterboard of key results for one department should be structured in terms of the groups. So the best way to structure the specific masterboard would be in quarters. Because what priorities are when it comes to managing company or department which is driven by this framework is always continuously monitoring quarters. So that's why I always structure master boards for quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. This is just example how flexible again Monday is and it allows us to make sure that all angles of specific management frameworks can be easily accessed.